Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, church. Come on, if you are here in third service and you are glad to be in the Father's presence, shout hallelujah. Now, I want you to look to somebody next to you. Say, good morning. Welcome to church. I'm so glad to see you. Uh, you look good this morning and you smell nice. Hallelujah. The grace of God is all over you, so you smell nice. The glory of God is all over you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. With a heart of gratitude, can we just be on our feet and stretch those beautiful hands up to heaven and begin to magnify the Lord from our hearts to his ears this morning. Begin to magnify him in your heart this morning and lift a song of worship to the audience of one who is worthy of all the glory and holy of all the praise. Hallelujah. This God is too much. This grace is too much. I know God whose mercy full and kind. He's faithful, he's gracious. See, I'm the apple of his eyes, the thought that fills his heart every morning, noon, and night. <laughs> See, he loved me when I didn't care. He was patient till I came, running back into his arms. I don't know about you, but see how he's turned my life around, made me a shining star. His glory to reveal. Everybody sing, I will worship you forever. Love him forever because this God, this God is too good. Make a commitment this morning. I will worship, I will worship him forever. I will love him forever. Because this God is too good. Listen, see, don't look too far to see how good he is. Just look at me. <laughs> hey, he took me from the Mary clay. He set my feet upon the rock. I'm standing in his righteousness. This is what he did. He took away my sin and shame. Gave me a brand new name. He's the love and he remains. See how he's turned my life around Made me a shining light His glory to reveal I will worship him forever I will love him forever Because this God, this God is too good I will worship him Somebody declare it, somebody declare it I will love him forever It up because this God, this God is I will worship, I will worship him forever. I made up my mind to love him forever. Because this God, this God, this God is too good. Are you sure about it? Are you sure about it? I want you to clap your hands like you love Jesus in this house this morning. Come on, give him a shout. 
and my parallel. Everybody, let's go now. Because of me.
praise God. I know you can do better than that. Praise God. You are driving off the momentum. You are not praising man. You are praising God. Praise God. Help me welcome your neighbor to the left, to the right. Say, welcome to church this morning. Tell him, oh, it's nice having you around. Ask him, oh, are you ready to pray? Praise God. It's important for us to know that it is an abomination for us to be a political novice. When those who knows, allow those who don't know to rule those who knows, those who knows are at the mercy of those who don't know. When we are politically passive, the church has to sit behind and we allow those who don't have the fear of God to rule this nation. But what a joy that we can travel on the altar of prayer to change the affairs of this nation. Some things are more than prayers. We need action. But we also need supplication. Somebody says supplication. Like I always say in my heart, if, for example, God forbid, the daughter of the president is kidnapped by the kidnapper or by the headsman, things will change. If somebody, do I have a witness in the house? If, for instance, the daughter of the president, God forbid, is killed by the full army headsman, things will change. Don't let it wait until it is you before you pray. People are losing their husband. People are losing their wife. Things are happening in this country. But we don't want things to change. Some people talk about revolution. They might not want to allow revolution, but there is a spiritual revolution that you can provoke on the altar of supplication. Whereby your God can fight for you. And it is time that we pray, ladies and gentlemen. Things are happening in this country. Last week, a pastor of a prominent church was killed by the same headsman. We will shout, nothing will happen at the end of the day. But you can change things. Say, my God will fight for me. I'd like you to hold the hand of your neighbor quickly. And let us go before God. Father, every enemy of this nation, every blood-sucking people that want Nigeria to scatter, every demon in form of man that are troubling the peace of this nation, Lord, in your judgment, visit them. Lord, in your judgment, rise up and fight for us. Declare the peace of this nation on the altar of prayer this morning. And say, Father, we declare peace in the northwest. We declare peace in the northeast. We declare peace in the north central. We declare peace in the southwest. We declare peace in the south south. We declare peace in the southeast. All around this nation, everyone that are killing people, let your judgment visit them. Somebody is talking to God this morning. Let your judgment visit us in the name of Jesus Christ. Begin to talk to him. Lord, I'd like you to declare in place of prayer this morning. We ask for divine judgments for everyone troubling this nation. Let your judgment rest upon them. Father, we bless your name. In Jesus Christ's name, we have prayed. Still holding the hand of your neighbor, Father, we've come to cry unto you. He said, if my people that are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray unto me, he said, I, the Lord, will heal their land. Father, we have this money as a church passed through this nation. I thought we may be much more louder. We declare as a church, Lord, pass through this nation. The same way you pass through the land of Egypt in that night, pass through this nation. This week, pass through this nation. This month, pass through this nation. Let there be news. Let there be news. Let there be news. Let there be news. So shall it be. In Jesus Christ's name, we have prayed. Jam us and gather for Jesus Christ. As you help me welcome the mom and say, Welcome to church. It's nice having you as you may be comfortably seated in the presence of your father. Praise God. The Bible said to the world and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this thing, it's because there's no light in them. Someone is here to share what God has done on, for others. Let's welcome Sister Chin and Okonko this morning as she comes to testify what God has done for her. Clap up for Jesus Christ. The louder you come, the faster she comes. Sister Chinaya Okonko. Let's clap more for Jesus Christ. Your name and straight to all the Lord has done for you. Morning, church. Um, I'm here to testify to the goodness of the Lord um, for my friend's life. During the seven hours, 
pastor said, John chapter 100, that's what she said, she prayed for grace. I was sure praying for grace. Anything that just came to my mind, I was praying. I prayed for grace, for perfection, excellence, everything, and exemption in Jesus' name. Okay, it happened on Tuesday while talking with my friend. He doesn't stay in Nigeria. He studies and works abroad. And I noticed he was online on on an unusual time. I was now asking him what's happening. He didn't go to work. He didn't go to school, stuff like that. He said um, that his department, they were doing an upgrade in his department so that he'll go the next day. That's Wednesday. As we are talking, um, he sent me a voice note that they've changed his department. That he just got to know that they are moving him to another department. And as they've moved in, that means his working hours has also changed from morning to night. So he'll now be doing a night shift to come back the next day. And it, that it affected him immediately. He was sure complaining and kind of lamenting. I told him instead of complaining, why not resume and find out um, why they transferred you and why they're shifting your, why they're changing your shift. He went on, he went that Tuesday, Wednesday morning, for the time difference. He sent me a voice note, I was still sleeping, child, but when I woke up, I listened to his voice notes. He was saying something that these um, company boss, the particular driver he used to follow, that that Wednesday, as they were conveying orders on his other colleagues to work, that they had an accident, and nine persons inside that bus sustained injury. I'm just thanking God because I wouldn't know what would have happened had it been they didn't change his department or they didn't change his shift. I wouldn't know if he would be among those that sustained those that injury or whether he will even. I don't, I don't even know. But I don't Hallelujah. Know. Bless the Lord. Divine protection, fear the exception by grace, we declare it to be permanent in Jesus' name. Let me tell your neighbor your miracle is the next. The path of the just is an everlasting light that shines brighter and brighter onto the perfect day. With a shout of joy, let's make welcome the royal mistral. Put your hands together one more time if you love Jesus. He's worthy of all the praise. Hallelujah. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Do you know why we're rejoicing? Because God has a powerful word for us this morning. And this is it. Your best is yet to come. Who's excited about that? Now, I know you've seen some miracles this year. You've seen God do amazing things this year. But God is saying to you this morning, you ain't seen nothing yet. Help me turn to your neighbor and say, you ain't seen nothing yet. Oh, it's like some people are comfortable already. You have seen enough this year. So let me talk to those of us who believe in the God we serve, the unlimited God. Say, you ain't seen nothing yet. Say to somebody else, today is the first day of the best days of your life. Come and be a prophet this morning. Say, today is the first day of the best days of your life. Now personalize and say, my best is yet to come. Hallelujah. Come on. We just want to tell you to hold on because your best is come. Your best is yet to come. Hallelujah. Oh, oh. 
have to come. Come on, choir, declare to them. The best is yet, is yet to come. Today is the best. Today is the first day of the best days of your life. Anybody excited about that? Come on, declare to them. Today is the first day of the best days of, best of your life. Days of your life. We want to say to you one more time. Today is the first day, Today is the first day of the best days of, days of your life. Your life.
tell him you ain't seen nothing yet. Say my best is yet to come. Amen. I like that song because it keeps you looking forward for better you, for better days. Why not lift up your hands and say, Father, thank you for better days. Thank you for better me. This is not the best of me. This is not the best of my days. My path is shining more and more onto a brighter day. Giving praise, giving glory. We give you praise, we give you glory. We give you praise, we give you glory. Hallelujah. He has taught the victory. Lift it up, say hallelujah. Hallelujah. You have won it all for me. You have won it all for me. And death could not hold you down. That could not hold you down. You are the reason, King. You are the reason, King. You were seated in majesty. Seated in majesty. You are the service. Look at your neighbor and say, this service is my own service. Amen, Amen to Jesus. Amen. Please take your seat briefly. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. We 
This month is our month of financial revival. And uh, it's been powerful since we started. First service was powerful. Second service was something else. I pray that in this third service, God will visit every one of us. Amen. Now, before we... Uh, we have uh, one of my uh, guests here today, Mrs. Bola Adeaga. We welcome you to church this morning, ma. Give her a big round. Thank you for coming, ma. She's the grandmother of those popular uh, uh, twin girls on the social media. I don't know whether you've ever come across their video. Those two beautiful girls that the first day I, listened, I watched them, I was so inspired. I was like, I watched the next video again. I said, wow. I didn't know we were going to see you, man. God bless you. Please give the Lord a big hand. You know, the Bible says, train up a child in the way he should go. You know, when a child is trained, when a child has been invested into, when a child has been taught the way of the Lord, you will know. How many of us have seen that video? Aha, yes. uh -huh. because we look like, have, let me see her. Okay, praise God. Praise God. You're welcome, man, to our midst. The Lord bless you. So we started talking about something very interesting, something very sensitive something that people feel that we should not talk about in the church they said how can you talk about money in the church but you see in our church every august we talk about money we talk about um, and uh, we, we talk about how what god's plan is for us as people of god third john verse 2 says i wish above all things that you prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers he said god delights in the prosperity of his servant God wants his children to be financially stable. It's God's plan. And you have to know that. And you have to accept that. And you have to believe in that. No matter what the situation may look like. Jesus said, I have come that they might have life and have it more abundantly. The Amplified says that they might have and enjoy life. So God wants your life on earth to be comfortable. It's God's plan for you. Praise God. I know there has been extreme. I know the message of prosperity. There are some places where it has been overflogged, where faith is being measured through finance. And it is said that if you don't have finance, it's because you don't have faith. That's not true. Amen. But we still need to look at, we need to balance scriptures that God wants you to be financially stable. Everybody say, God wants me to be financially stable. Now, the devil does not want God's people to be financially stable. And like I said in first and second service, so the devil will not go and stand at the middle, at, at the door on Monday morning and say you are not going to work to keep you poor. No. The devil will not go into your account and take money and take it away. But what does the devil do? What the devil does all the time is that the devil twists our understanding. The psalmist says, give me understanding that I may leave so the quality the, the, the quality of life you live is determined by the level of your understanding so what the devil does is it you just twist your understanding in which area has it twisted our understanding in the church he said the, he said money is evil even though the bible didn't say money is evil he said but we have preached when we have had those preaching before where people told us that money is what but the bible didn't say money is evil you know he only said the love of money the craze for money is evil. Praise God. Some of those things is, he says, you don't need plenty of money since uh, heaven is your home. Have you heard that before? What do you need plenty of money for here when heaven is your home? He says things like financial surplus is 100% spiritual. So many church people are paying their tithes, giving their offerings, doing all night prayers, quoting scriptures, doing all those spiritual exercises without being active in the marketplace and expecting that one day millions will just come. Boom. Because it makes us feel that the journey into financial stability is 100% spiritual. That's not true. There may be some spiritual aspect to it, but it's, you have to be physically involved. Amen. You have to be active in the marketplace. You can't be lazy, sleeping and waking up and expect God to bless you financially. Praise God. He also tells us things like money is a mystery. 
You know, every time you see anybody that is financially stable, you just think that they, they are mysterious people. Maybe they have done money ritual. <laughs> money is not a mystery. Money is a medium of exchange. Money is medium of what? Exchange. So there must be something to exchange in your life. There must be a gift you are trading with. There must be an idea you are trading with. There must be a problem you are solving. Are you following this? Because money will not just start moving in your direction because you are prayerful. Money will not just start moving in your direction because you have done fasting and prayer and you have done all night, you have quoted scriptures. Money moves in the direction of those who are solving problems. Are you following this? Now, this will demystify money before you because making money is, is not a magic. It's not a magic. So, we talked in the first service. I said I'm going to be talking about first and second service. I'm talking about things that will help us understand better where our understanding has been twisted. So, we talked about saving. That was a saving. As simple as that may look to you, you can, if you look at scriptures, we read Proverbs 6, verse 8. From verse 6, it said, Go to the hands and learn from the hands. Hands are tiny insects. How big is the stomach of hands? Very small stomach. But if you look at the secret of hands in verse 8, it said, Provide our supplies in the summer and gather our food in the harvest. In the, in the, in, um, in the message, he said, He stores up, He saves. As tiny as hands is, He understands the power of saving. Tap into the power of compound interest. And we read from Genesis 41 concerning Egypt. When the king of Egypt, Pharaoh, had a dream and didn't understand the dream. And God sent Joseph to interpret the dream. What was the dream all about? He said there will be seven years of plenty and there will be seven years of nothing. Seven years of famine. He said, but during seven years of plenty, save some. Save 20%. So what they did in Egypt was that they built storehouses in all the cities and they store 7, 20 percent. Praise God. I don't want to ask this money how many of us have savings because I'm going to embarrass people by saying, but I won't say do it. Although I, I'm tempted to do it. Because it is said that black people don't save. That black people like to gratify their Desire now. Now or never. They said Jacob is white. They say Esau is black. I don't know if they are correct. But I think it's an insult. I don't believe that. But that's what they said. Because Esau said, what is my birthright to me? Give me what I need to, to take care of now. So I don't want to dwell more on saving because I have so much to say. But let me quickly say this. You have to develop the habit of saving. If you are tired of being broke, you must have savings. Praise God. You must have savings for emergency. Savings for what? If a family man, you determine what that figure should be. Then you put some money. Make sure you don't, don't save foolishly. Save in, uh, good, in a good place where the interest is good. Uh, and when I say saving, don't think of bank alone. There are other investment groups where you can put money. Amen. It can even be insurance. The Bible says in Proverbs 20, 21, he said the foolish man spend everything. Proverbs, I did this, you see, this kind of message put pastors in trouble because some people end up being angry at the end of the service. This kind of message. Some people end up being angry. Some people say he's talking to me. How can you come to church and you don't expect one of those one or two words to come to you? He's talking to me. This is your church. He's talking to me. The thing is too harsh. <laughs> you know, African people, we like to be told that our problem
problem is in the village. That's why those prophets are selling. Ah, you are a great man, but now you should be a millionaire. Your problem is your grandmother. Ah, you say yes. We like to be told that we are not the problem. We like to be told that the problem is in the village. So they put 20% for seven years. By the time famine swept, swept around the world, the whole world started buying from them. And they took over the world. And Egypt became the superpower. Some came to buy bread. They said they don't have money. They said, give us your land. I know when people are under distress. A foolish man spent everything. It is foolishness to finish everything. I don't care what your salary is. Even if your income is not enough. I said in second service, let us assume that your salary, your income is minus 5,000 naira. Hmm? You, you know your income. I don't know your income. But you, you just, let's assume that your income is minus what? You, you are not responding like you used to respond. This message is, you have started already. You are already giving me those. It's hard. Have you? But you like me later. Do you know 5,000 naira in 10 years? In an investment of 6% 6 per annum. I will come back and tell you what it is. I didn't, I've not done all my calculations, but I'm coming back in one of those Sundays to tell you. I'm coming one of the Sundays before the end of this month. I'm coming with a, a, some figures. In 10 years. Do you know how much it will, it will be? So I said, but Pastor, if you keep that 5,000, you won't die. Although the devil will make you feel like you will die. I said the world will crumble. It's a lie. The world will not crumble. Have you not asked yourself in Nigeria? Some people will carry, uh, they, some people will protest, especially government workers. And they will say, When have you, when last did you collect salary? They will say, 13 months. I used to wonder, How did you survive for 13 months? That means even zero salary, people still survive. I want to talk about when you just decided to stay on 95%. What was the problem of the prodigal son? He spent everything too. Abi? They call it prodigal living. Riotous living. Wasteful spending. So avoid waste. Save your waste. Reserve your waste. Praise God. Don't just create a saving for emergency. Create savings for retirement. Savings for what? When I was preparing this message for the first time, I asked myself, Tunde, when are you going to retire? Because this is a reality. Um, you see, pastors, we don't retire. But whether we like it or not, we're going to get to a point where I can preach three times on Sunday. I mean, can we be frank with ourselves? Maybe then I'll be 120. I'll just come to the church. And I'll just sit down. A young pastor will preach. Then I'll close the service. <laughs> After this meeting, I'm preaching somewhere. I'll be running somewhere for a meeting. Then I can't do all that. If I have 10 invitations, maybe I will honor one. You think you two will not, that time will not come for you two. You are praying for long life. That time will come. What's your plan for that time? What's your plan? So you save towards that time. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So that you don't become a burden to your children. I will say I will save. If you are going to save, you are going to minimize your expenses. You're going to reduce your spending because it is from what you are spending now you have to save. You are not going to continue to spend all, even if your salary is just thirty thousand. This is the reality. 
while you are praying and fasting that your future should be colorful you are going to do that too praise God you are going to avoid waste you are going to check through review your life, your spending and cut down your waste and avoid them completely how do we waste money? very simple when you buy by, through impulse when you don't plan your spending you waste your money when you don't have budget no financial plan the day you collect your salary some sweet mouth salespeople will, will approach you and you will buy what you're not supposed to buy you will make a financial you will make fin a wrong financial decision your salary is hundred thousand you just collected it you buy uh, uh, a pair of shoe of 35,000 and you will be left with 65,000 you will now say I'm believing God I stretch my feet <laughs> no, that's what we do now to cover up for financial irresponsibility so I release my feet so that by the time I'm about to finish the 65,000 God will just supply <laughs> can I tell you something God does supply but God cannot continue to nurse your prodigal living he can't continue to, to feed your prodigal living that's why there are times he just look like he's not listening to you and you say ah God I've claimed it and name it what's going on I name it and claim it are you not hearing my prayer God decided not to listen there are some people going through some financial tough time now it is God that is behind it It is not witches and wizards. God, your father, heavenly father. He said he chastised people that he loves. I mean, yes, he loves you, so he's chastising you. So you are saying, God, supply, I command, money, come in. He said, Wumbo. <laughs> he's behaving like, and so, you quote all the scriptures, you fight even faster. Mm -hmm. Then you come to church hungry, and everybody is sharing testimony. <coughs> sorry excuse me i don't have any testimony what's going on you just broke a rule a financial rule if you want to be financially prosperous you have to develop good financial habits good spending habits and how to do how to do that is to avoid impulse buying i was saying impulse buying Before you buy, you think through, especially major spending, think through your alternatives before you buy. Sometimes when it's time to make major purchase, you may have alternatives that you're not thinking about. Better options. So take time to pray and think through the spending. Amen. Praise the Lord. You know, last year, my family, we spent most of our time outside the country because of David. Like, you know, it costs so much money. <laughs> so this year, summer came. Before summer was coming close, I told everybody we have gone for two summers together. <laughs> I said we combined last year's summer and this year's summer together, and that's why we enjoy so much. When they were there, I said, "Do you see what we enjoy? We see summer together." <laughs> you see, the reason is that why we are poor in the church is because we don't face reality. We expect faith to take care of our irresponsibilities. Faith will not do that. Have some accounts that doesn't have ATM card. Huh? Have some accounts that doesn't have what? Have some accounts you don't have quick access to. Easy access. You know, every bank gives us easy access. It's easy access, easy access. Hey, who oh, dangerous? easy access if all your accounts have easy access including your business account you will chop everything are you following me is this making sense this morning when I heard that you know we started a cooperative in the church we call it royalty a villa where you you save we're trying to encourage people we started like two years now we save money when you need money, you can borrow two, 
times two of what you have with 9% interest. And there's nowhere in Nigeria you get 9% interest. So when I heard about it, I joined two. And I, and I, and the did I now had that you cannot just withdraw. It's not like you can withdraw quickly like that. You have to apply when you have time to withdraw. Then when they approve your withdrawal, if it is that you are withdrawing completely, you are stopping completely, you, a certain tiny percentage will be removed from your money. But if you are taking loan, you want times two, they'll give it to you. I said, I like this kind of a thing because sometimes you need, you need, some, you need some money to be where it will look like it's not your own. Too much sense of ownership can kill somebody. Give me his room, my, my, my money. Have you not met people in the bank fighting that? Today I'm closing this account. Give me my money. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> oh God, take it easy. How bond on this bank today? If you don't give me my money, hey, Nigerians, ah, what are we here? Sometimes you need to have put your money in places. Sometimes you need to fix some money. Am I correct? And you tell the bank, I'm not coming back till one year's time. We all need it. You all, we all need systems and structures that will encourage us to be financially disciplined. And you have to deliberately develop these things. Because if not, we all have tendencies to be buying. Exactly now that this uh, internet's buying. Eh? You just be on your phone. You see a beautiful shirt. Buy. Go to cart. Say, let me check whether they have shoe. Buy. Go to cart. By the time you get to cart, you talk somebody. Say, eh? Okay, let me remove you. Quick to buy. It's quick to buy now than before. Oh, I pray Nigeria. I don't know when Nigeria will start using credit card. Eh? We have started. They said we have started. Thank you, ma'am. She works in the bank, so she knows. We have started. Hmm. I'm afraid. I'm afraid. Because credit card. Are we, are we mature to handle credit cards in Nigeria? Do you think so? We are not mature. Because credit card is good. It's a good development. But you have to be disciplined to carry credit card. You can ruin your life with that credit card. You can ruin your future with that credit card. You can run into serious trouble with that credit card. So if you're already collecting credit card because it is not available, be careful. Maybe if you are qualified to have like uh, 200,000 credit card, maybe just collect that of 20,000. Maybe for emergency, maybe. But be careful because easy access to cash can ruin somebody's financial destiny. Are you hearing me? Praise God. Can we go for them? So, don't fall into the enticing language of salespeople by just buying. What do you expect a salesperson to say? A salesperson that wants to sell this phone will make it look like you don't have alternatives because he wants to sell. So don't fall into such things. Avoid unhealthy lifestyle. Unhealthy lifestyle could be alcoholic. Yeah. After you have eaten food, it is food and water your body needs to be alive. Every other thing, they are just uh, extracurricular activities. <laughs> my mother will say, when my mother was alive, when we were growing up in Yoruba, she said, Omo mi ti jeo ni momo. Omo mi yo is not my business. <laughs> because my mother has four grown-up boys that can eat everything. So at a point, she started telling us that you have eaten is what she wants to hear. That you are belly full is not a business. <laughs> because human needs are insatiable. Human needs are insatiable. You can enter a store where they sell shoes or sell a uh, suit, if you're a man, suit, and you love suit like me. Every suit that is your size will be calling you, take me home. Please take me home. Then you'll be thinking, if I don't take this particular color, it's, this color is scarce. You hardly can get this color. If I don't take this color home, I may not get it some other time. Tell that voice, I bind you, Satan. 
that can be God. Oh, you are hearing? It's going, it's going. This is the last one. Go. Go. There's nothing like last one. Have you ever heard this car is a limited edition? They only made 50 all over the world and sent five to Nigeria. And this is the last one. Let it go. If you don't need it, let it go. If you want to save properly, you must be able to draw a line between your wants and your needs. They are not the same. Ask yourself, this last edition, is it a need now? If it's a need and you can afford it, buy it. If it's a want, let it go. Another limited edition will come next year. Are you getting what I'm saying? Why many people are broke is not because Satan is attacking them. It's because they are attacking themselves. Everybody said, I receive grace to be financially disciplined. You can also help yourself to save by doing what I call automated saving. You know, you can set your account that every 30, 30 days, let it transfer certain amount of money. You just schedule it and put it on autopilot. You need to do it. Some of us need to do it because some of us will never save. We don't do those things. Every 30, 30 days. There's something we want to do we have not been able to do. I've told myself this week we will put an automated <laughs> so that before money lands. <laughs> Sometimes you need to do all that to be disciplined. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Can we go deeper? One of the ways to get out of poverty is to overcome the survivor mentality. Everybody say survivor mentality. We inherited it from our ancestors. Our ancestors, I'm talking about our great, 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 great grandfathers. They only work for food and shelter. For what? Food and shelter. 90% of them. Food, shelter, shikena. And they pass it through our blood to some of us. That we are... In 21st century, many of us are still living with what I call survivor mentality. Just let me put food on my table, put shelter on my head. What am I looking for? I'm fine. And this is one of the things the devil planted in the church. And many believers don't have big expectations. We don't have bold prayer points. Our prayer points are Give me food on my table, shelter on my head, she cannot. And the you that is praying that prayer, God wants you to have an orphanage home. God wants you to have a scholarship board to pay school fees of orphans. God wants you to send missionaries to Asia. But you don't have both prayer points. All you're asking God for is just me, myself, and myself. So, so our, survivor, our survivor instinct says, once that's why some of us, the moment you start earning some kind of salary, have you met people earning like, maybe like 500,000, 850? You just think you are fine. You are not fine, sir. You are not fine. Do you know the inflation rate in Nigeria? It's about 14%. What that means, inflation 14% means that every 1 million naira this year, by next year, will have lost 14% of its value. So your glorified salary will soon become chicken change. And the rate at which employers increase salary is not at the rate of inflation. That's why this, the former big men X big men, plenty for Nigeria now. X what? <laughs> X big men. Sir, you don't know me. You don't know me five years ago. You don't know me. You don't know me at all. Me five years ago. You cannot even see me like this. Why is that? 
the money, he still has the money, but inflation has overtaken the money. So you need to deliberately get survivor mentality out of your mind so that you can keep dreaming big, expecting big. Are you getting what I'm saying? Being hungry for increase in your life, believing God, praying bold prayers, not settling for small potato, but extending your faith for something bigger all the time. Because what looks big today may not look big tomorrow. Is this making sense to you? Or am I, am I, am I making you angry this morning? Because this subject is very sensitive. It's eating everybody. That's why we are quiet. Because every world will be telling, the devil will be telling you, look at that example, you are the one. Then Satan will tell you, don't mind pastor. But listen to me, if Egypt had not reserved 20% during the plenty time for the farming time, they would have been part of the hunger. You won't be part of the hunger going on. Your family will not be part of the hunger going on. So you need to, now, you see, because wealth is a mindset. Poverty is a mindset. And survival mentality is in the mind. It fuels poverty, survival mentality. It tells you, you are fine. Why do you need more? Especially when you are from a family where you are the best. And everybody is saying, Babake, you will be tempted to feel you are fine when you are not fine. Family of 20, only you, everybody, 19, you are not fine yet. You are afraid to pick calls. Because almost everybody around you, they are saying, give me, give me, give me, give me. You are not fine yet. So believe God for more. Release your faith for greater things. Trust God for increase, supernatural increase. Don't limit yourself to small potatoes. Proverbs 4, verse 23. Is it out of the heart? At the word? Issues of life. So if you're not thinking plenty, you can't test plenty. If you're not thinking abundance, you can't test abundance. If all you are thinking is survivor, all you will have is survivor. But if you think beyond survivor, God will supply more. God can supply more. God can. He said, I have come that they might have life and have it more. God can do it. Look, you are from poor family. God can turn your life around and raise you as a first multi-millionaire in your family. And if your faith can carry more time billionaire. I don't know who is receiving that this morning. God can do it. It's not too late. But it will start from the inside. If you continue with this survivor mentality, it cannot happen. No. It cannot happen like that. Are you following what I'm saying? See yourself in future writing checks in hundreds of millions to change lives of people. See yourself doing great things for God in such a way that you cannot even imagine. It will happen. Ah, some people cannot say amen. So you need to overcome that ancestral mentality. It's, it's, it's far back to our ancestors. They only think about food and shelter. And if you look at, if you have read the story of man, from cave, stone age, to, it's just about survival of food. Those days of Adam, food, shelter, the guy is fine. But thank God some people thought beyond survivor. You two start thinking beyond survivor. Another thing survivor mentality does is that it limits our drive. You just work hard to put food on your table and you are like, okay. But you know something? When you start thinking beyond survival mentality, you will work hard and work smart. Are you getting what I'm saying? You just be working hard. You work smart. You will think. You strategize. Because you know what you're expecting is bigger than you. It's bigger than what an average person is expecting. It will push you. It will give you a strong drive. 
Proverbs 22, 29. Says thou a man that is diligent in his business. He shall stand before kings and not mere men. That word diligence in his business. If you check other translations, it means being diligent and being skillful. It's, it means working hard with skills. Working hard smartly. Huh? Not just working hard. Hard work will earn you a living. Hard work will earn you what? A living. And that's survival. Smart work will earn you a fortune. Hard work is about your neck down. Smart work is about your neck up. That's why Christians should work smart, not just work hard. You know why it's like unbelievers have taken over? We are not working smart, we're only working hard. Work smart. Your number six must be working sharp, sharp. Because if you're going to solve problems, then you're going to think smarter than other people. If you're, going to be, if you're going to have ideas that will rule the world, you're going to think beyond the average. You're not going to be thinking like ordinary people. Are you following what I'm saying? Is this making sense to you? This is very important. This is why an average human being believes in a direct relationship between effort and success. You know, most people believe success is just about effort, about struggle. You say, oh, I'm, you know, struggle, you know, everybody else believes. No, success is not just about effort. It's not just about hard work. It's also about smart work. There is something, there is an idea God can give you today. And it will turn your life around in one day. Are you following what I'm saying? The guy, this Facebook guy, that Facebook guy. Just that Facebook idea turned him to a billionaire. The day I heard about Facebook many years ago, I said, what is this? Just like all of us felt, said, what is this? I said, all of us friends, and uh, so. So when I opened my first account, I, was, I said, then what's, what's this all about? Just posting pictures. This will improve people's self. Then one day, I saw sponsored advert. Then I asked somebody beside me who knows about it. I said, he said that's where the guy is making his money. I said, eh? He said, yes. He said, he created it so that all of us can come there. And once there is crowd there, he will start advertising. Coming is free. Advertising is not free. Mm. You see, smart thinking. Because initially I thought, you don't know me. Why do you want to give me an account for free and I'll put in my picture? What? You don't know me now. What's that? No, the guy is smart. Some of you come for free, come for free. Now, Facebook is one of the biggest online community in the world. So people now pay all over the world. The guy became a billionaire. There are some God-given idea that can turn you to a billionaire. There are some God-given idea that can change your financial story. But you have to believe beyond survivor and work hard and work smart. Are you following me? Is this making sense? Stop thinking what God wants to do for you is for you alone. He told Abraham, I'll bless you and I'll make you a blessing. So God wants to make you a blessing. That's God's plan. Not just to bless you. He wants to make you a blessing. He wants widows to see you and smile. Huh? Widows. Widows in your family. I mean, sorry. In your family. Widows in your, in your church. Widows in your community. Widows in your village. You want them to hear your name and be saying, God bless him. God bless him. God bless him. You can't do that if, you're not, if you don't have enough. So, you've got to have beyond survivor mentality. Don't just keep saying, God bless me, bless me. No. God make me a blessing. That's your prayer. That's our prayer under the new covenant. God make me a blessing. God make me a blessing. Are you following what I'm saying? Are you following what I'm saying? I, I've done this before. Let me just do it again for somebody to understand because sometimes you need to do some things twice. Minister Shei, please come. Uh, please come. You know, there is this scripture. I did it in some times ago, but I didn't show you like this. He said, uh, Luke 6.38, he said, Give, it shall be given to you. Good measure, press down, shaking together, shall. Who will give to your bosom? Okay, if you read that scripture, this scripture is to this man. This man is a Christian. His name is Tosin. He said, Tosin, give. 
it shall be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaking together on the shall men give to your bosom. Then I asked myself one day, I was in that scripture, I said, who are those men? Because there are two kinds of people in that scripture. This one, he said, Lord, give me, Lord, give me, Lord, give me. God said, don't worry, I'll send this man to you. Then I told God when I understood what that scripture was, I said, God, this is the kind of people I want to be. I want to be this man. That any time you want to bless somebody, you send me to them. I don't know if you're getting this. this. This one is bigger. This one is better. At this level, is survivor. Give me, give me, give me. You finish, you say, give me again. He said, don't worry, I'll send this man to you. Now, this man is giving so that he can receive. Hmm? This man is giving so that he can give. I don't know if you're getting this. This one is giving. So that what? That's why he's calculating. He's telling God. December, it will be one month. You have not got it. This man is not giving to receive. He knows he will receive. So he's giving to give. All the time he's trying to outgive God. I said, God, this is where I want to be. This man has overcome survivor mentality. It's not about survivor again. It's not about his needs again. It's not about changing his car again. It's not about changing his suit again. It's, not, it's, it's about God. Just God, I want to just bless me so I can bless this man. Do you get that? So, but survival mentality will make you stay here forever. Every time. And God, give me. You know I pay my rent. You know I pay my children's school fees. Lord, you know, you know. You too, you know God. You explain to God what he already knows in prayer this man is not talking too much in prayer have you heard the comedian who said two people went to pray a rich man and a poor man and the poor man was shouting and shouting and the rich man said please don't shout don't shout again don't shout and he brought out the money and he counted it and said please just go just go go don't disturb god don't disturb god just go let me talk to, i want to talk to god this is this man. That's where I want to be. This man is a distributor for God. A channel for God. Huh? He's always, that is who he is. And people who think like that, they become great financial pillars. One of our members was in my office last week. He shared a story of a woman who challenged him in giving, who made him to like giving to me. He said that woman gives at least 50 million every year. He said, but when she started, she joined a small church. And she said when she joined, they asked her, what's your secret? She said when she joined the first the church, the church has so many needs. She said to herself, God, any time they have a need in this church, send me to them. Let them talk to me about it. So she started a business and she was giving 100% of what was coming from that business for anything they need in that church. The, ch the business just boom. Survivor mentality. Giving mentality. Generosity mentality. A blessing mentality. Lord, whenever there is a need, find me worthy to send me. That's what I want. Just send me. Be sending me to people. Send me to orphans. Send me to widows. Send me to broken-hearted people. Make me a distributor. Be sending me. I'm ready. Just be sending me. But because the church has not been taught this way, 80% of church wants to be this man. I prophesy. After this meeting, there will be a financial shift in your life. After this meeting, there will be a, a visible financial shift in your destiny. Amen. After this meeting, you will grow up to become a great financial pillar. Amen. You become eyes to the blind. Feet to the lame. Feet to the lame. Answer to the oppressed. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Please take your seat. Clap for them. I'm sorry, my... I know my time is gone. I cannot finish this message. But listen attentively 
God wants our thought pattern to grow beyond survival. He wants us to see ourselves as people that he wants to make a blessing. I'm a blessing to my world. You're not saying it though. You're not saying it. You know the kind of church I want to pastor, and I'm already pastoring it, is a church where everybody in that church, they are ministers. Everybody has a mission. Everybody is, everybody is on a mission. I was, I, I was happy February 14 this year. February 14 was supposed to be Valentine. Some young people in this church, they went to uh, Sweet Sensation. They bought fried rice, jollof rice. Young people, they didn't tell me, I saw it on Facebook. They began to go to the destitute hand over the nylon to them put smile on their faces that is who god wants you to be not when are they going to do open market again not for the purpose of giving to the open market too, for the purpose of collecting from the open market you can start from there but that's not where god wants you to end oh we all started from there nothing is wrong from starting from there but to stay there is a cause is a God wants you to be thinking when is the next open market? He said, Why are you asking? Say, I'm giving 10 bags of rice. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Any time God sent me to them. This is why Abraham became larger than life. Because God called only Abraham. He didn't live with only Abraham. He left with Sarah, Lot, and so many people followed. Somebody, he has not seen breakthrough. He's already carrying people up and down. No breakthrough yet. Why won't God bless him? He has not seen his first breakthrough. He said, Lot, let's go. I want to take care of you guys. You know why America is rich? America, if you see how they talk, how American government talk, they talk as if they are the one God has called to take care of other people. That's how they talk. They say in Somalia, they don't have rice. They carry rice. You are not related to Somalia people. What's your business? They say, no, we are the one to take care of all of them. And that's why when you think like that, God will make you a distributor. They say some people are having sickle cell somewhere. They say, let's go and help them there. America believe they are the one called to take care of everybody. And that's how they took over from everybody. Are you following what I'm saying? Develop a mentality of being a blessing. Not a survivor mentality. A mentality that, look, I don't have much now. I'm broke now. But I know God is going to bless me. And God is going to make me a strong financial pillar. I'm going to be answered to many people's questions. That's who God wants you to be. That's how God wants you to think. It is when you start thinking like that, that God will start blessing you bigger. Amen. You want big blessing. That's how to get big blessing. Start thinking like that. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You are, you are hungry. You don't have money, but you are thinking, one day I'll feed people. Although I can't feed myself enough yet, but I'm going to feed people. And I'm serious about it. Are you following what I'm saying? People thought our church, they, long time ago they thought we were already having plenty of money. Because we were always prognosing to other people's problems. We didn't have a single plot of land. We would gather people and say free medical service. We didn't have a single plot of land. We're, doing, we're grading roads. Say we're going to grade this road. We're grading roads. We didn't have, look, that is how to get God's attention, not prayer points every day. No prayer request. Embarrassing God with long list of requests every day. He's tired. Yes, he sent me to tell you he's tired. He wants you to seek first his kingdom. Be kingdom minded. Be other people minded. Let people's problem move your heart. Huh? Although you have yours, but let people's problem move you too. That's how to get it done. When we're waiting for David, we waited for David for 21 years. That 21 years, when I meet people that are waiting, I said, I'll pray for them. I said, I don't need one. Mm. Honest, in honesty, to, to be honest before you, it wasn't a prayer point. Although every year, when I write my vision, I'll write it. I showed my wife. My 2001, I was studying yesterday. I stumbled my 2001 diary. 
I show my wife. My, I, mean, I used to have family vision, you know, I'll divide it. So, number one, I wrote what is number two. How did I write it? I said, The arrival of my first son, David. I showed her. I can show you, sir. I snapped it. The arrival of my first son, David. 2001. 2002 again, I wrote the same thing. Kali Kokashatalabaya. A man waited for 21 years, but he was the head of naming ceremony in his church. One of my ministers were telling me. And his senior pastor did not know he was waiting. But he was busy going everywhere, naming people's children with joy and excitement. And God had him. You want to be rich? It's not by asking for money. It's not by asking to be blessed. It's by asking to be a blessing. This is why many church people are frustrated every day. Don't give me money now. He's tired. He wants to hear something different. Lord, make me a blessing. Stand up on your feet. Lift up your two hands wherever you are. Don't pray any prayer today. Say, Lord, make me a blessing to my generation, to my world. Don't just bless me. Make me a blessing. Don't just bless me, but make me a blessing. Don't just meet my needs. Use me as a distribution center for you, for others. Use me to meet the needs of others. Help me to think beyond survivor. Me and my family, me and my children. Help me to think beyond survivor. It's no longer about me from today. It's about you. It's about what you care about. It's about what touches your heart. It's about what you care about. It's not about me anymore. It's been about me all these years. But from today, it's no longer about me. It's about you. Pray this prayer sincerely from your heart. Say, Lord, in my generation, raise me as a financial pillar for others. If you want to use anything, Lord, you can use me. You can use me. You can use me. Use me. That's my desire. Make me a blessing to my world. Help me to think beyond the, the survivor level, the survivor mentality. Help me to think beyond the survivor mentality. Help me, Lord. Make me a channel of blessings to the hungry, to the orphans, to the kingdom of God, to everything that you care about. That's my desire this morning. I don't just want to put food on my own table. I want to put food on the hungry table. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Please open your eyes. I'm sorry we took extra time in this service. We're going to close shortly. I'd like you to go and watch the recent interview of Mike Tyson. I like to talk about ordinary people because if I talk about pastor now, you say it's because he's a pastor. Ordinary. Now, Mike Tyson... At 30, was already a multi millionaire. He had made $300 million, more than $300 million. And a few years later, he was declared bankrupt. He sold his house, the house he wanted to spend the rest of his life. He sold it, he declared it for sale. 50 Cent bought it. They interviewed him recently. He's now old, he's about 53. He said, they said he should talk about the things he wants young people to learn. He said, I spent too much money taking care of myself. I spent too much money doing it. Taking care of myself. He said, I, I didn't even think about anybody. You need to have a program inside that your small money that has, that has nothing to do with you. It has nothing to do what? With you. Every time we have declared open market in this church, my family makes personal contributions because we understand what it means to put food on the table of hungry people. 
we don't need to know who goes with the eyes. We don't need to. It's a spiritual principle. Powerful. He said, I spent too much money taking care of myself. Plenty of women, plenty of alcohol, plenty of enjoyment. He said, I was dying to leave. Every time you're thinking about yourself, the Bible says those who try to save their life, what will happen to them? They will lose it. He said, but those who give it out, what will happen to them? They will save it. That is a spiritual principle. That's how to save it. Some people think, ah, if I'm not thinking about myself, who will take care of me? God! <laughs> and that's a better person. God! My wife said, before she married me as a, as a member of the church, she thought that I was living in some kind of affluence until she married me. <laughs> ah, pastor, senior pastor of Real Christian Center. <laughs> it's not about you. It's about him. And until you capture that, understand it, take it and believe it, that's when you start experiencing true riches. You'll be, God will bless you. Hey, if you can enter that realm today, in, in, in the next one year, you will look back and say, what? You, you, build, you live in houses you didn't even pay for. Stretch your two hands towards this place, wherever you are. Whether you're on the ground floor, whether you're in the gallery, stretch your hands forward. Whether you're outside in the overflow or you're online watching, stretch your hands forward. I decree today that the survivor mentally leaves you alone. I decree today that the self-centered survivor mentality is crushed in your life. Amen. By the grace flowing on this altar, I command impartation of selflessness, impartation of always saying, Lord, I just want to be a blessing. Impartation of being a blessing mentality. Receive it now. Amen. Many of you, you are walking out of this gathering. God is making a cutting, a covenant with you a covenant of covenant wealth. Amen. A covenant of generational wealth. Amen. God will make you and your family a distribution center. Amen. Your email is not loud at all. Amen. God will make you and your family a distribution center. Amen. God will make you and your family a distribution center. Amen. When God is looking for who to use, he will use you. Amen. When God is looking for who to trust, he will trust you. When God is looking for who to trust, he will trust you. Amen. From today, you become a channel of blessings. Amen. Channel of blessings to your generation. Amen. Channel of blessings to your world. Amen. Channel of blessings to your world. Amen. Channel of blessings to your world. Amen. One of my sons in ministry, his son, his first son is abroad, studying now. He's a pastor. The boy entered the country with $100. He said, it still bothers me that everything the boy is using, God is just supplying. He's looking better every day. God is blessing him. I said, you don't know what you have done in the past. Do you know how many destinies you have almost wanted to die? They call you 2 a.m. You are out there. Do you, know, do you know how much selfless you have been for years? So you think God will now leave your own children to be there and suffer? Stretch your hands towards this place. After this meeting, even the things you can't afford financially, go bring to your doorsteps. Amen. Blessings that are bigger than your size, go bring to your doorsteps. Amen. You become a blessing to your world. Amen. You become eyes to the blind, Amen. feet to the lame. Amen. In that office, because of this single mentality you are having, God will promote you. Amen. God will lift you up supernaturally. God will bless your business supernaturally. Amen. He will open amazing doors to you supernaturally. Amen. Give God a big, I mean, wave your hands to Jesus wherever you are. Give him praise. Give him glory. Give him glory. Say, Lord, it's, a, it's the beginning of a new journey. It's the beginning of a new journey. Now that I'm willing, now that I'm ready, you will use me. Thank you, Jesus. Wave your hands and give him praise. I will never be the same again. I will never be the same again. It's a new journey, a new beginning. 
into a, into into a, a, a new beginning in a journey into generational wealth into a life of being a blessing blessing to my generation blessing to my world give god praise open your mouth and mention these things say lord thank you for making me a blessing to my world thank you for making me eyes to the blind thank you for blessing my business for the kingdom's sake for your kingdom's sake thank you for blessing my family for your kingdom's sake thank you jesus thank you for choosing me thank you for the privilege of being chosen to be a blessing i will never be the same again in jesus precious name we are. please let's package our offerings quickly as we give to god we're closing this time.
make you a financial distributor to your community, to the nation, and to your world at large. Appreciate God for that word this morning. In Jesus' mighty name, we have given thanks. As we go this morning, the Lord will go with you. Whatever you lay your hands on this week, you would prosper. In all of your labor, there shall be increase in the name of Jesus. And whenever there is a need, anywhere around you, God Almighty will find you worthy to meet them. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. And let us say, surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives and we shall dwell in the house of the lord forever and ever amen our anchor scripture the nations will see us victorious world leaders will see our glory we will be called by a brand new name a name given by the lord himself the nations will see us victorious world leaders will see our glory we will be called by a brand new name a name given by the Lord himself. The nations will see me victorious. World leaders will see my glory. I will be called by a brand new name. A name given by the Lord himself. Amen. This is Royalty News. The headlines. The Lord's Lady Convention starts this Saturday. The Covenant Keeping God releases His Covenant Blessing next Sunday. Now, the news and details. It is always a great joy to have you worship God with us. It is our deepest prayer that your finances will experience a great revival this month in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us come boldly into the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy. So. Make it a date with God as we come before the Master Seat this Wednesday by 6 p.m. Next Sunday service is tagged Covenant Blessing. Come expectant to receive from the Covenant Keeping God in any of our three services by 7 a.m., 8 a.m., and 9.30 a.m. Ladies, this year's convention has been repackaged and reloaded with Faith and Fashion 2.0. Coming up this Saturday by 9 a.m., the side attractions, Interclan Runway Competition, and the panel of judges are Oluremi Samuel Akintola and Sumbo Oyele. Others are Girls Talk Session, In House DJ, Fate Food and Fashion Exhibition, Lots of Games and Prizes to be Won, Host Sumbo Adeoye, Don't, Don't Miss Out. The third and the last session of the pre wedding marriage counseling for 2019 comes up on August 24th by 8 a.m. All intending couples wedding in the month of September through to December should see Mrs. Abiola Ubu for further instructions. Interested married couples are also welcome. Get ready to be refreshed as all workers gather for retreat on Saturday, August 31st. Save the date. Check the bulletin for further details of this announcement and many more. Kindly connect with us via our social media platforms as mentioned in the bulletin. We look forward to receiving your testimonies and prayer requests. So we will come your way again. Keep enjoying Uncommon Grace for Uncommon Blessings. You are great. great.